enjoyed the, uh, the previous talk, uh, pretty exciting. Uh, I, I also enjoyed the panel a little bit, and I was interested by all the debate about what's defined as IoT and what's not defined as IoT, and it reminded me of, uh, of a cartoon I saw, and it has an executive sitting behind a big desk, and he says to, the, uh, to an assistant who's there, it's imperative that every company is going to need IoT to succeed. Would you please find out what IoT is? And, uh, and, and I'm afraid that that's, that's kind of the way uh, a lot is happening. There's a lot of enthusiasm uh, about the technology. I'm enthusiastic about it. I'm excited by it as well. Uh, and a lot of people are moving aggressively, and you've, you've seen some of that to adopt it. But in some, some cases, people are moving aggressively uh, without a clear understanding of the value proposition that they're going to create for their customers or the business model that they're going to capture uh, as a company. And so I think the question is partly about the technology, but a big part of the question is about how you do the right things for customers and how you do the right things uh, for your business. And that's what I'm going to talk about. I think some of the examples that, uh, that I'll go through uh, may disappoint some people. They may say, well, that's not Internet of Things because it has people in the loop or it's not enough data or whatever. But I, I will tell you that the examples I'll talk to you about are businesses and they're creating value and, uh, and customers are buying. And, uh, and so I, I look at it from the perspective of whether we can create a business that, that helps our customers and us. So th I, I'm going to, th this is just a, an overview of what I'm going to talk about. Everybody's aware of the first part, that technology is creating huge new spaces of opportunity. Um, that's, that's the context in which we're operating. But successful value creation starts with customers. It doesn't uh, start with technology. You need to be informed by the, the potential that technology will bring to you. But the successful value creation starts with the customer. Value capture. You can also create a lot of value and, you, and not collect any of it uh, and, and parcel it out to other people. Value capture depends on the business model. And it will be very, I, I work at a manufacturing company. It's very often the case that the business models that will let a manufacturer capture value from the data they get from Internet of Things are not the business model, the core business model. And they may, in fact, in places conflict with it or conflict with the priorities in the core business. So a key element is how do you develop the business models to capture value? One of the things we've done a lot of work with are advanced services models. And uh, advanced services models are, uh, have been around for a while. People have heard of Rolls Royces, Power by the Hour, and so forth. They're being increasingly enabled for a broader range of products by, uh, by connectivity. Um, and the thing about them is they're not like managing a product company. They, they're a completely different business to manage. So you have to be ready for the transformation that comes within your business as well. So the first thing I'd like to do is I'll just mention there's the technology. And the technology is important and the technology is exciting. And there are many new avenues that we need to explore that relate to, for us, new sensors. For example, things you might print on rubber and that would survive under the conditions the tire goes through. Um, it communicate, uh, smaller sensors, lower power requirements sensors, uh, integration, algorithms that make value out of it. There's a lot of work to be done. But there are also a lot of examples of great technology that created no value for, for the company or for the customers. So I'll tell you specifically things that I have seen. I have been at a mine and seen the telematics units for their vehicles stacked up in a corner and not used because although the technology may have been excellent technology, it wasn't effectively integrated into the work that the mine needed to do and may even have impeded it. I've, uh, I've actually, we've actually, in one of the businesses we're in, we've sold an application, a driver behavior application, to a fleet that already had the driver behavior application. But all they had were the technology and the reports, and they did not know how to use it to create value. And that's, uh, that was, that's a critical. I, I received an RFP from an OE who uh, I think gave us a list of 17 things they wanted a tire to sense. 
But when we asked, what are your priorities, or why do you want to sense these things, we, we really didn't get a good answer. So it was really technology, uh, they're all nice, I wouldn't argue, and maybe behind the scenes they know exactly why they want it. But uh, it seemed like technology in, in search. And I've, I've actually been in meetings with some business leaders who wanted to uh, outfit a tire with sensors, and the reason was because our competitors are doing it, but the value prop, and it may be the right thing to do, but the value proposition isn't understood. So my point about technology is it's great, it's exciting, but you gotta start by understanding where you're gonna uh, create value, or you'll end up with your devices sitting in a stack by the side of the road somewhere. Um, we do a lot of, uh, of customer insight work as part of, uh, as part of our innovation process at Goodyear. And we don't, we don't start by saying, oh, let's go find an application for the Internet of Things. We start with the Internet of Things in our mind, the capabilities of the current state of the art of the technology, and then we go try to understand the customer problems. And it's not about you know, short visits. It's, uh, it's applying observational research, rapid prototyping, uh, you know, iterative design in order to understand the, the unmet needs of customers and the context in which any new application needs to be provided. And in this day and age, it, uh, you know, a lot of the applications benefit from connectivity. Uh, and then once we have defined a value proposition, so now we know we can create value for a customer and we can create enough value to make it worth trying to go to market, then we look at the business models. And we do that through a, uh, a process of, uh, of experimentation. We hypothesize potential different business models. Almost always, they are not the core business model. In a man even in a manufacturer that has a services arm, that services arm is basically break fix generally, and oftentimes not a highly profitable part of the business. We try to look at what are the alternative business models, look at at least three, try to understand what are the risks associated with that in general and for, for Goodyear. And then we do a bunch of business experiments, kind of a lean startup approach. And we try to reduce the risks by going what we call with market out into the world to try to test and understand whether we're creating the value we thought, whether people use the technology in the way we thought, whether the technology works the way we thought, uh, whether the partnerships deliver on the commitments we expect of them, and, and, uh, and then we incubate the business before scaling it. But the, the key is that you can easily, with, if, if you're not careful about business models, you can do one of two things, neither of which you really want to do. One of the things that you can do is leave a lot of money on the table. So for example, in our business, if we put sensors on tires and we sell a tire with added sensors, we'll get a margin related to the cost of the sensor and our competitors will easily be able to, to implement that, that business model. Uh, so we're leaving money on the table. If we're creating a significant amount of value for a fleet and we capture a small amount, then shame on us. The other thing you can do is enter into a business that inherently isn't profitable, that the cost structure is such that the value you create won't allow you to capture your cost to deliver. And then that's an opportunity for more business model innovation or for tracking the cost curves on the technology. But, you've, uh, but it, it's a critical part of, of getting success. And uh, there's a whole set of disciplines around that. Probably people are familiar with them. But my, my point here is technology is important, but it's, it's really not primarily about the technology. You gotta know it, you gotta incorporate it, you gotta track it, you gotta know how to use it and integrate it, but probably 15% of the solution re is, is uh, the result of, of picking the right technology. I, I also say one other thing about the technology. If you get the value proposition right and you screw up on the technology in some way, that's recoverable at some level. You can, it costs you money, it costs you time, but you can go back and do it. If you get the technology right in some, uh, some sense, but you get the value proposition wrong, there's just no, you, you can't, you can wander around the universe and hope you'll find the right value, but it, it's not a, a likelihood. Uh, when I said we start with the customer, we spend a lot of time with customers. So we don't interview customers or have a focus group with customers. We go out in the field and we spend significant amounts of time observing customers, 
ideating and prototyping, getting feedback, under validating the hypothesized needs through prototypes, and uh, until we converge on something that's worth doing. We also measure the value created. We don't say, well, we could create value by measuring the pressure of this tire and telling people when it's low. We need to know, well, what happens if it does get low? Uh, what do they do about it? What do they do now? What could they do? What would be the consequences of doing something differently? It's about understanding the, the value that you can create for customers. I, I put this, this, is, this may be a little hard for, uh, for some people to read, but as I've looked at uh, what we're doing, people, we talked before about the definition of the Internet of Things. One thing I'll say is at the core of it, there's a thing. So uh, I, I put together something that looked at different ways of creating value, starting from the thing and going out uh, with increasing uh, involvement in the, in the systems around the thing and with increasing value, value uh, or involvement in the value chain of the business around the thing. And I'll go through examples from my industry in each of these areas, but I think there's uh, some degree to which this is, uh, is generalizable. So uh, the simplest thing you can do with a thing is track it. You can monitor it with something like RFID. Uh, you might create value for that in various ways, by preventing theft or, uh, or improving internal inventory or improving value chain inventory. Uh, the next thing you can do is integrate your product with the broader system of what it's, which it's a part. In our case, that's a vehicle. Maybe a truck, maybe a mining vehicle, maybe a, an automobile. And your, the information from our product can improve the performance of that larger system. I'll talk about that. The next thing you can do is try to create, uh, use the information to improve the performance of the technology in use. So, or your, your product in use, I mean. So you're, we have a product, it's out in the world. As trucks roll around the, the world, things happen. They hit curbs, they hit objects, they lose air. Uh, maintenance of the tires when you're far away from home is difficult. We can help people maintain them in, uh, in a in more optimal way. Even further than that, we can take customers out of the business of being in tires. So you can, and in general, companies can do what they call servitizing or to make, selling their product as a service. And we're, I'll give an example of how we're doing that as well. And then beyond that, you can move into uh, value propositions beyond your core product. So for example, uh, tires in a fleet are maybe 4% of the total cost. Fuel is 10% of the total cost. We can help with some of the same telematics that we use with our tires to also improve uh, fuel economy. There are also ways of repurposing the information for other people outside even of, that, uh, of your customer base. So my point about it is people have talked a lot about we gotta figure out how to get the business models right. One of them is sort of understanding that there are a cluster of different kinds of business models that apply when you talk about the general topic of the Internet of Things, even if they start back with the thing you started with. And the second thing is figuring out that business model is hard work. It's got to start with really understanding the customer value proposition and then deliberately understanding how you're going to, how you're going to charge for it, how you're going to operate it, how you're going to sell it, how it's going to be integrated with your customer and so forth. So if you move to the, to the higher end of that uh, set of concentric circles or the ripples, the customer benefits can be lower total cost of ownership because you're getting a better performing product. They can be improved uptime because it's a better maintained product. Uh, their own costs, they don't know or care about our product anyway, um, but they're reduced they get reduced administrative costs. You can design models that let the people pay only for the use of even a physical product. Uh, power by the hour is an example. We do it as well. And then peace of mind. But for us as a manufacturer, what does it give us? It gives us a chance to differentiate our pro our, uh, ourselves beyond our product, to go in spaces our customers, especially some of the newer competitors, might not be able to go. We can price for value because in a, in a commoditized business, it's very hard to to win price battles. We can enable ourselves to participate in a larger value chain, which is very important. And, and you get improved customer retention, which is also important to us. 
So I'm going to go through each of the levels. And if some people feel like, I don't call that Internet of Things, OK. Uh, it, it delivers uh, value, and it starts with a thing that's somehow connected to the world, which is, uh, which is my definition, I guess. The uh, one is just an augmented product. An example for us is our racing. Goodyear supplies the racing tires for NASCAR. We put RFID tags on there. The need to know what lot and where the tires are and whether they'll be there on time are all very important in that, in that part of the, uh, in that particular application. So that's the, uh, the first start. The second is uh, integrating information from the tire with the vehicle, with in particular the vehicle control system. So we uh, mount sensors on tires, and that's not so easy to do because a tire exerts huge forces, centrifugal forces obviously, on anything attached to it. Uh, we measure temperature pressure, tire ID. Uh, we also use analytics based on vibration in the wheel well to estimate tread depth. And all that information is fed into the vehicle control system, and it improves braking and handling. Uh, for, at least for some vehicles, it improves braking and handling. So this is a way where information from the tire is improving the performance of a vehicle. Uh, this is just, uh, you know, there's a lot of analytics behind it. But essentially, every time you, uh, your tire goes, uh, performs differently under different circumstances. If it's raining, if it's cold, depending on its pressure, uh, depending on how long you've been on the road, et cetera, what its wear is, and those are important to, Im to improving uh, handling and braking. Uh, the third uh, thing I would like to talk about is uh, an intermediate service. This is where we use information to maintain our product in use. So it's to get the best value from the product for our customers. So um, in this instance, what we have done is to instrument uh, the wheel, actually, with a tire pressure and temperature management device. It's, it brought, it, uh, we have telematics units that track uh, the, the temperature and pressure of the vehicle. It also has GPS, obviously, so we know where the vehicle is. This is a map of a single vehicle in Europe over a period of about six months. And the green is where everything's fine. And the yellow is where you could have a problem. And the red is where you get a breakdown because of poor maintenance of the, of the tire. We are able to use algorithms to predict uh, a few days in advance, sort of like the weather guys can predict things in advance of when they'll happen, and give the, the drivers alerts so that they can uh, make a decision about whether or not to complete their, uh, their run, to pull over immediately, and, or to just do routine maintenance. We're in business uh, in Europe uh, with this application. It saves customers, uh, uh, it improves their uptime, it improves their uh, total cost of ownership. I think that that's, uh, the, the whole circle starts with sensing, putting it up in the cloud, running our algorithms, but very importantly, getting the information to the users in ways they'll actually use. So when we first did our experiments, uh, one of the fleets was very avid in using the information and got great value. The other fleet just didn't. And uh, we had, part of our research was understanding how do you change the behavior of fleets in order that they can receive the benefits of the information you're providing them. Because if you provide great information and nobody uses it, it's, uh, it's not, I, I think it's not well designed and great information, but, um, but it's not of any value to the customer. Uh, this business is, is launched uh, across several markets in Europe. Uh, this is the, the servitized uh, case. So this is where we actually do everything for the customer, their, their fleets again, uh, with their tires. We take them out of the tire business. So we specify the tires, we buy, buy and put the tires on, we decide when they need to be maintained, we decide when they need to be rotated, we decide uh, when they need to be retreaded, we, uh, you know, we, um, uh, do, we manage the inventory around it. We do everything associated with their tires. If there's a, a roadside failure, we, we are responsible for it. In, in effect, we are the customer. And partly this is enabled by data, 
some of the data which we uh, collect in, in the ways I've talked about. But part of it is a, a larger model where if, you're, if you are your own customer and you're collecting a lot of data on the use of your product in real context, then you can uh, use that information to design your product differently. And then you can use the new design product to deliver a better or more cost-effective solution. So there's an inter one of the cool things about advanced services is this interplay for a manufacturer between product design and, uh, and the service design. And the glue is the information or the data that you're collecting along the way. So services-led business models, uh, it's, a, it's really a competitive strategy. It's not like a product strategy. If you try to jam it into your product division, pretty soon you'll be selling value-added tires with uh, sensors on them. Uh, but the emphasis is on uh, the, the total care and the services leverage the products and, and vice versa. We are in market with this business and have been for a few years in North America. Again, it's a, you notice that the different businesses and different segments and different parts of the transportation industry have different business models for IoT. Uh, related uh, services. So, and and there, this is not an exclusive set. Uh, the 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 next I'll go is moving beyond the value chain. As I said, for a typical fleet, four percent of their costs are in tires, ten percent of their costs are in uh, in uh, fuel. Other costs are in other maintenance-related activities that we can affect. This is a, an application, a driver behavior application. So basically, you use accelerometers in the vehicle to, to measure rapid acceleration, harsh braking. Uh, you measure idle time. You measure sharp turns. And you rate the driver along seven criteria. And the, uh, the a fleet typically starts out with drivers in the C, D, or below range. That means they're wasting a lot of fuel, and they're tearing up their trucks. And they're doing it in, in part because they think it'll get there better, get there faster, or, or, uh, or, but it doesn't, actually. It's not as safe. It uh, doesn't get you anywhere faster, and it, it chews up uh, your assets. So we are also in market with, uh, with this application. It moves beyond the business we're in, but if you're already selling telematics to fleets, then selling value-added applications on top of that is something that, uh, that makes perfect sense. So um, that's another, another business that, uh, that we're in. Uh, this is just a chart that if you want to be a technology guy, you can look at and say, trucks have a lot of telematics-related uh, devices on them. And uh, there's a lot of, there's sometimes more than, they're often in a vehicle, more than one network, more than one set of sensors connected to it. Uh, and, how you use the information is what, what makes, makes a difference. So I, I guess that's, the, that's kind of where I'd like to conclude. I think the technology is exciting and it's getting better uh, every day. And as we look at some of the trends in some of the sensor technology and some of the networking technology, certainly in, uh, in some of the algorithms uh, that have been developed, it's exciting. We think we can do more than we're doing right now. But the key is starting by understanding from the perspective of the customer what the customer's needs are. And it is, uh, it's not, you can't interview customers for this kind of insight. Uh, when uh, Carl mentioned I worked at, at 9X for a while, I once spent six hours in a manhole um, observing a, uh, uh, a fiber optic splicer do his work. After about 20 minutes, uh, he said, okay, I got to get back to work. I said, please do. That's what I want to see. Uh, the problem with tours is that people tell you what should happen or what they think you want to hear is happening and, or, or what's on front of mind for them. They don't tell you, uh, oh, by the way, we just ripped out our telematics units because of some, some reason. Uh, value capture requires different business models, and this means that you have to go about that in a very disciplined fashion. And there's a lot of discussion about it. It requires not only good thinking, but good experimentation in the world. And one of the ones that I think, a business model or a set of business models that are really well adapted to the technologies that connectivity are bringing 
are the advanced services models for manufacturers in particular. They're, they're not the same business. They, they've got their own challenges. So thank you very much for your time.